All right, let's get inside and go shop with this guy. <laughs> I'm going to jump ahead of him and see. I'm going to try to figure out what I think George would uh, would go for. Let's see. I got to get out of Danny brain. I got to kick into George brain here. Well, this might be a horror booth for many people. <laughs> um, Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Yeah, no, it's... Because that was exactly my reaction. It's all dull. I'm, I mean, look at her. Look at her judgy little face as we walk by. special shopping day. This is like something that is on my bucket list that I get to do today. You hear me talk about him all the time. Uh, George the Antique Nomad is in my town and we are going to the Paradise Valley Antique Mall, but I'm not just going to be shopping with George. I'm also shopping with this lady here. This is Tiffany of Thrifting Vegas, for those that don't know. And uh, we are going to go in here and just, uh, I'm sorry, George, we're going to pick your brain. You might be a little weary when this is done. No, he is like literally a fount of knowledge. And so this is super exciting for both of us. Like, we can't wait. So just waiting for them to arrive. And I say them because Zeno's with them too. And, uh, we're going to get shop done. All right, let's get inside and go shop with this guy. <laughs> I do see a gold pheasant. Wood. Oh, it's wood? Oh, I would not have thought that was wood. I kind of like him for 15. It's not a bad price. Oh wait, is there a sale in this booth? Twenty uh, percent. Oh, if it's over twenty. Yeah, Debbie mm. was telling me that they do a lot of sales here. So I was kind of, I was kind of drawn to this guy. Oh, I like that. It sort of yeah. looks like Anthony from California, maybe. Or it's wood. wood. Oh, yeah. It's like Sirocco then. But it doesn't feel like a Sirocco. No. It feels pretty solid. It's a little heavier, yeah. yeah. Like oh, it is. Thin. Look, there's a seam. Yeah, it's it got is a Sirocco. Seam. Yeah, yeah, or one of those lookalikes. Ah. Yeah. Just one. Fifteen on that. Fifteen's not bad. That's I mean, not bad. So yeah, actually, there's there's something there, and uh, I like the John Perry, but I think I know. I would love a those. Oh, you already spotted another one. Yeah, no, 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 I spotted one in a video you did. Oh yes. Oh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm going to jump ahead of him and see. I'm going to try to figure out what I think George would uh, would go for. Let's see. I got to get out of Danny brain. I got to kick into George brain here. Look at, that. Look at the graphics on that box. Pyrex where Look at it. It was only $5.95 back in the day. And they are asking. They're asking 15 but it's 25% off. So that would make it right around 10 bucks. Let's see what George thinks. Oh, I Which like are, the graphic. Isn't that great? Like I, the original? Oh, and it's Pyrex. Oh, Pyrex Porn. Yeah, actually, that's that's kind of interesting. $15. So yeah. The box is great. It's the box it? is everything. Yeah. yeah. The box is everything. Yeah. I would actually. I mean, the box is what I want to sell. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then the fact that it has the, the Pyrex in it is just a bonus. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of collectors like to have boxes like uh, this because if does it collecting cornyware or pyrex, then it's, a it's got copy. it's got the original. There's like a little oh, the original copy. Uh, no, it's the heat spreader grid. Oh wow! Still in its little original oh. package. Yep. Oh, there's more. Somebody got this for Christmas and didn't use it in 19. It's got the little instruction thing with the recipe for coffee too. Is there a date? What is the recipe for coffee? It's like coffee and water equals coffee, right? <laughs> Pretty much. What's dated? That's what I was looking for. I don't see a date. It's got to be 19. It's got to be about 19. I'd say 70. Because oh, you think it's 70? Well, look at her hair. Because of her bouffant. Okay, all right. Yeah. 
Yeah. $5.95. Wow. Just says it's a registered trademark. $7.70. Oh, that's, that's yeah. probably it. 1970s. 1970, yep. Yeah, she yeah. looks like my first grade teacher. <laughs> Use one to two teaspoons of instant coffee as directed on the package. Since there is no brewing water loss, each serving is made with five and a half ounces of water. Put measured instant coffee into carafe, add boiling water to desired capacity mark. Cover and allow to stand a few minutes before serving. There you go. Coming in from the top, that is not something that the Italians did originally. You'll have to go over to George's video and find out what he's saying about these cool chairs. I really liked them. I want to know your thoughts on the whole velvet painting You know, trend. I remember I worked, um, I worked in an antique mall and one of our employees said, the day that velvet paintings start to be sold here is the day I quit. And uh -oh. she pretty much did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've got to say, that was because she was like, oh, I just can't imagine. Oh, that's just so down market. Well, the thing is, is that mm, it's also very nostalgic. A lot of people I remember... Yeah. I mean, we all you, had them. You grew up in California, yeah. so uh, I'm sure you remember that, um, and you lived in California, so yeah. I'm sure that you I had a tiger. When they were selling. Yes, exactly, yep. and they yeah. just sold them by the roadsides, and you Definitely. just you just uh, you just could get them. Well, that day is over, and people still remember them, and they're fun. I mean, they're kitschy. They're a little over the top. Yeah. The painting is a little exaggerated, and I think that's what people like. You know, yeah. it's kitsch. Yeah. I mean, there's something about low yeah. art that is really fun. You're right, you could get a, a velvet painting, a Mexican blanket, or a bag of oranges, right? Oh that's yeah, there you go! <laughs> <laughs> a velvet painting, a Mexican blanket, or a bag of oranges, that's so great. Yes, that's right, and your windshield washed. Let's see what we've got here. Lots of knickknacks. We're trying to share George and his knowledge, and it's just amazing to shop with him experience. It's 25. I think I've looked at this before, too. It's just, it's, I love it. I love it. It's so whimsical. It's Alice in Wonderland. But I don't think there is a sale in this booth, so that's pretty much at full retail on that one. Oh, somebody's a Disney fan. In here. Oh, this is kind of pretty, but it's a, a newer, cheaper version. I do tend to pick these up when I find them, like at the Goodwills and such. It's called watermelon glass because, well, mostly because of the color. It's not high end glass, but it's very popular and people buy it. So I pick them up when I find them. Oh, look, a blue pumpkin. They probably got that the same place I got all mine. Look at this little guy I just found. I, I think this is just like a like a, a resin plastic, but it's it's older, so it could actually be like a celluloid. It is marked with a little sticker here that says "Made in Western Germany." I'm gonna get George's opinion on this one. It is only twelve dollars. I mean, I would I would put that in my own personal collection even if it isn't worth reselling so I think I'm gonna get it either way well this might be a horror booth for many people <laughs> um, sorry I can melt my yeah throat. no it's because that was exactly my reaction it's all doll I'm, I mean look at her look at her judgy little face as we walk by look at these little cuties in there napco there are Christmas. some interesting things in here. Oh, big old Uncle Sam, Anna Lee. Look at that. What are these? Oh, they're just basketball cards. I'm kind of leaning toward getting that book for Carrie. I don't know why it's giving me a Carrie vibe. That little girl there. Oh, I wonder what George is talking about over there. Look at this little chip and dip guy. Almond. Six bucks. He's so cute. I'm going to get him. Wish I wasn't finding so much cute Christmas, but I don't know. Eight bucks for this little Santa Claus. He's awful cute for eight bucks. All right. I'm a sucker. I'm going to get Santa too. 
That would be why he's only eight dollars. Okay, we're gonna leave Santa. Yeah, the Look at the really little gingerbread the vintage yeah, napkins. Exactly Look, right. these were sixty-five cents. Sixty-five cent now. Actually, it looks like they were marked down to forty cents. You know, you and they are Please new in the okay. package. We're Check gonna get those right. for five dollars. I really want to get one of these for Jordan, but I'm a little concerned that it's uh, sell by 1231 2021. So it's a year past its sell by date. What do you think? Should I take a chance? It is Christmas. Sure, I'll get her a sensitive plant. think those are old they are made to look old but they're just I'm gonna confirm that with George but I, I thought he might be attracted to these because they look like teak but I don't think they are so I love kind of obscure Disney collectibles this caught my eye it's a Walt Disney see and play with Disney kins and accessories Disney Castle by Marks. They are asking $200, but how cool is that? There's an Ozzy and Harriet game. And of course the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. That's actually an old one. Look at that little guy on top there. How fun. Bring back a little, little piece of childhood in this stuff. This is a cool little pottery piece for 25 it is just an art pottery piece I do believe I don't think it's anybody extra special fancy but it's kind of nice that one's kind of interesting too I might get George's take on those so what is your thoughts on like some pretty just standard art pottery I mean it's nice form it looks like it's well done it is signed probably never going to figure out who that is that exactly is. the thing is can we figure out who it is and that is the question i ask all the time because these are art pieces they were well done they have a good style i think for collectors it's a great so area to collect anything? if you just really like it and then the question is can you identify the label i mean there are some really famous people like richard sperry is worth thousands of dollars and, and his signature is pottery yeah. and his signature is sometimes legible um, so it's worth taking a minute to research. If you don't know one, what I suggest. Or is that a date? Do, is that a date or oh, a signature? I think signature? that's 88 in this case. So that actually looks like a date, but it could also be a W. But and it an could S. be, yeah. One thing I would say if you are a studio potter, help us out. Give us a mark that we can identify you by so we can give yes. you credit later in time. But the other thing is if you find a piece in a certain area, you may be able to find a pottery guild or some group of artists or artisans oh. in an area who might be able to help you identify some of this stuff. And if we could get some scholarship on this, almost every part of America had people making these kind of things. And I would love to see there be books or yeah. papers or things written, articles on the internet that would help us with identifying these things because so many good things were made in the, you know, it started sort of as hippie ethos in the 70s and then by the 80s and 90s they were accomplished and making really good stuff but a lot of them we just don't have a clue. Yeah, I, I mean that's 25 and to me that just... Yeah, that if, screams better than $25. Absolutely. If it was a known person, it'd probably be $75. Yep, exactly. I usually find some pretty good stuff in this booth. That's just the dome lid is... Oh, 175 for the petrified wood carving. That's pretty fascinating, actually. Good. Oh, there's more petrified wood. That one is a dolphin. That one is 175. Let's see what other goodies are in here. That looks like some Polish pottery. Yep. 20 on that one. Pottery by Boleslawik. Boleslawik. Yeah. I love Polish pottery because it's just so colorful. It's vibrant. They it just they have that's why it stands out and you can recognize it. Yes, I do. I do see more of the false graph Yorktown. I got her a lot of pieces. I got her a lot of pieces. 
that she is getting for Christmas. So that would be my daughter who started collecting that pattern. I like to find it at the thrift store, so, you know, for a couple bucks a piece. It's a cute salt and pepper, 15. Ass, Axon, Axon. It's got plastic stops, so it's not super duper old. It is definitely vintage. It's kind of cool. I kept it up there just in case you wanted. Why do I keep finding Christmas things? I do, but look at this clay nativity. Oh, that looks like Isn't that sweet? I, it is. I collect nativities. And it's only 10 bucks. So I have to get this one. There's a little cabinet down here on the floor. Tiffany is making her video too, so you'll have to go watch her version of things as well. This is just a super fun shopping trip for all of us. We are having so much fun. From Mexico. It's uh, Sti Puebla, Mexico. That's a nice little dish. I do like that one. Look at all these little owls. And all these little cactus plant in these little, oh my gosh, those, those are dark. Somebody must have made these because here's little doggies inside of ornaments too. Oh, and a little kitty that almost looks like uh, my grand kitty. Okay, they must make this stuff. Okay, this looks like a cabinet that George is going to look in. Some interesting things, but I think there's a lot of like reproduction things in here too. Let's see what else we got. That's really a pretty piece there. Sterling Crescent, George Jones and sons made in England. Look how pretty that is though. Let's see what they're asking on that one is, oh, dropped it. 15, 15, it seems like a good price. I found a beautiful amethyst glass with a silver overlay. It's $12. My people love when I bring nice glass pieces to my sales, so, this is a great piece for me to bring to whatnot. And uh, I think I can make a little bit of money on it, but I know it'll sell for at least 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that one. All right, this is where the black light comes in handy. To bring, a oh wow, that one really glows. Really, really glows. That one does too. So they have different levels of glow, depending on how much of that uranium they uh, put into the glass. Look at that. Some are more subtle, like this is a little more subtle, but then the jadeite really glows well. So fun, so fun to put the black light on this stuff and then display it with the black light. And sometimes some of these other older colors will have a little bit of the elements in them that make them glow, but none of these. Yeah, there was that period, of course, this is 2009, so there'd just been the 2008 recession, and so a lot of companies to stay in business start doing promotional swag, and some of them are really good companies, so if it's a good maker, it doesn't bother me at all if it's got some sort of a specific thing oh, on it. It is heavy. Oh, it's a reverse painted. Oh, interesting, and so you could put a light in it. It's actually cool. It is cool. It's the golf course. It's... Looks like it, and I wonder if that was up in Monterey. Or yeah, I'm not sure where that tournament is held because I have a friend who's a big golf nut and I have to ask him about everything because I have never held a golf. It's on the ocean I, somewhere. Putter. Yeah, it looks like. That is cool, 45, $45. This piece is cool. It's, um, it spins inside here and it's, and it's a silk. Yeah, sometimes when I haven't seen something before, it's just like, okay, Tapestry yeah, would be, actually would be, I think 30% off. 30% off? It would be 30% off. I still, I just don't know. I don't know if I could spend that much, but I do like it. George hasn't spotted this one yet. I haven't. Danny found something she knows I'm familiar with. Yeah. Treasure craft. 
Yes. So tell us, George, you actually wrote a book on treasure craft, didn't you? I did, yes. yes. It was so much fun. A pottery company that was a big producer that no one seemed to know anything about. And all my friends who knew all the Bowers and the, the Catalinas and all those would say, oh yeah, yeah, they made a bunch of stuff. And I thought, why doesn't anyone know about them? And then I discovered that their little pixies were things my grandmother had and she bought those back in the 40s and 50s. I had no idea they produced back then. And one thing led to another and I just ended up writing a book about it. So this is a really fun find for me because this, this is a hobby piece. Now, I have this exact set that Jordan made for me. Was it? Yes. When she was in, I want to say sixth grade, which was a long time ago. Sorry, Jordan. Um, but, and I made Jordan sign the one she made for me too. And this one, the person signed it as well. So this is just kind of a little nostalgic uh, scene for me to find that someone else made the same same scene. 1550 for 15 pieces is not a bad price for that at all. Look at these guys. Retired fat cat shakers. Oh, they're Pier 1. They're Pier 1. Those are so cute. And then this looks like an Artisania Rinconata. It is. There's the Artisania mark right there. And they've got the, you get the matte glaze, and then they have that really signature shining glaze accented pieces that they use. He's 25. What do you think of that piece? Oh, I like this, actually. This is later uh, Royal Gouda or Howda, and they did a whole lot of this in, um, there's a name for this. It's some sort of a Delft. Uh, mm -hmm. that they call it even though Gouda is not dealt it's a different town but they uh, they did these as modernist pieces in the 50s and again it's that idea of being able to do a really cool multiple glazing thing with one step okay so how's that price price. I think the price is actually fine I would think that'd be about a 25 to 30 dollar okay. item cool look at this set oh my goodness how fun is that with kind of a coral pink grape leaf and a frosted pattern. I love that. Ooh, I might have found myself a bookie book. Oh yes, I definitely found myself a book. It's called Reef. Well, you know, this is like one of my passions is my aquariums. All right. Did I see that right? Is it really only... <gasps> $12? $12? Yes, we'll take that. I see another item in an original box. I just got to take a peek. This is a Coleman lantern. I just, right, I, I don't know. I'm on this kick of finding things in their original packaging. It, I guess it kind of fascinates me. Flashlight bulbs. Oh my, look at that. That's fun. It doesn't have them all. Wouldn't it be great if they had them all in here? Yeah. I found something to put under the Christmas tree for Rachel. I love this booth and all the kind of mid-century stuff in it. It's cool, cool ducks there. I wonder who makes you. I have found some before that turned out to be worth a lot of money. Um, so I always kind of take a look, but this is almost kind of a thing you have to know now 1986 so they are not mid-century had these been like mid-century they could have been definitely worth that $29 I mean they're still worth the $29 just for me as a reseller I don't think there's much more than that in there See, there's another one of these items in its original packaging card table service tray I also look for condition of the packaging as well so finding it in pristine original packaging is even better card table service trays those are kind of fun actually i like those not that i ever sit at a card table but those are fun so i found this piece <laughs> and i'm gonna ask george if this is is fonso actually a company or is this somebody's name that they I'm made it i'm not sure i think it's somebody's name i'm turning it upside down to see what this other mark is right. is it a date it looks like a date of 19 
Oh. No, G108N, so it's a right, stock Right, so it's like number. a stock number. Well, that makes me think that at least they were doing some small level of production with this because you wouldn't put a stock number on if it was just a one-off. So. Right. So it must be a production piece, but it's not a company I'm familiar with. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I kind of like it. They want 75 for it. I don't like it that much. I don't either. <laughs> So I found another interesting piece another of pottery. Interesting pottery now this piece. one is definitely marked. Oh, yeah. Let's see and uh, so the that. dealer has said it's well their their writing's a little hard to read too. Ten, I think it's uh Tenemoku. I think it's Tenemoku, Japanese. Tenemoku. It looks like a Japanese mark, but let's get I've got a loop here. Oh, can... George carries a loop. He puts me to shame. Oh well, <laughs> I've learned the hard way. <laughs> Besides my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Yes, Japanese. It has the uh, yeah Tenmoku pottery, and it is Japanese, and it has the Japanese lettering. So this was actually made to be sold in Japan or the states, okay, as opposed to some that were just meant for export here. So okay, I think right. it's cool. Is that a good price? 25? Oh, I think it's a fair price. I don't okay. know. Okay, so it's that not worth much worth more than that. More, All right, honestly, cool. That's price at 30. That's probably so I had a lot of comments on these the last time I was here, so I'm excited to be able to show these to George because I still think they're awesome. But let's see what he thinks. Yeah, and it's fused glass. It's very thin, but it looks like... I mean, these look like they might be 30 years old, so they're probably right in vintage. A lot of fuse glass was made in the 90s, so I just really, the colors are just great. I yeah. mean, for a decorative piece, you could do, a, I mean, put that up and pick two colors and decorate a room around it, and then you're yeah. Laura Caldwell. I, and I think I comped these out on, on eBay the last time I was here, and, they're, and their price is really good for is what really these are going for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, did it say who the maker was or anything? Because I don't know this. It's been a while, so I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I'll have to look at your video. Yeah. Very cool. Spotted this piece of carnival glass for 30. This is an old piece. This is like your true old carnival glass. The base color is a cobalt blue. And what's really fun is there's these defects called straw marks and you actually you want to find that I mean that tells you this was not done in an age where things were made perfectly and the true old carnival glass was not a high quality glass it was pretty mass marketed uh, for just you know the the regular everyday consumer it got the name carnival glass when they had an abundance of it and they weren't selling as much in the retail setting and they started uh, selling it out to the carnivals to give away as prizes so that's how it got its name in the collector market but i might actually go ahead and get this piece because i love it spotted a piece of maxfield Parish over here, 75 on that one. Again, it's nice to have George here to just confirm my thoughts on value. This is a tortoiseshell flamenco dancer headdress. Wow, look at that. George is overlooking at pottery in the other case still. He's over there. We'll get them over here in a second. But I spotted this other piece of carnival glass here that is half price, so it's only twenty seven fifty. So this piece is not quite as desirable as that other one that I took up to the counter. The marigold color, which is what this is called, is pretty common. So I'll probably leave that one. But there was a couple things in here. I wanted to look at this purple Weller piece is interesting too. We'll have we'll have George take a look at this one and see what he thinks too. I feel like this is an incredibly good price for these little dessert plates. Two dollars and fifty cents each. There's a whole little stack here. And they are Limoges. They're AL and Elite. They're actually triple marked. They're marked there, there, and there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get those, but I'm gonna confirm with George on them too. 
two dollars and fifty cents. Ooh, they're the price is sure right. They're triple marked. Yeah, Limoges. they're elite Limoges. That was a pretty good company. Um, yeah. You know, they're a little worn on the high points, if that yeah. bothers you. But I would expect that with something that's a hundred years old. Right. So, yeah. And they're so inexpensive. Yeah, I'm gonna get these. Look at this necklace and earring set. It's real stone. Absolutely gorgeous for $13. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on a plate and send that up front too. And I spotted another piece of carnival glass back here. It's a, it's a holly pattern and it's got like the, um, I think they call this like the Prescott pattern. It's an amethyst glass. And and only twenty-five dollars. Hmm. I think I am gonna leave it. Those chips are pretty substantial. If it's still here next time I come, I might snag it. This piece has my eye. It is. Oh, it's actually got its silver base. <gasps> I never find them with their bases. Look at that. Oh, I love it. It's only $22. I believe they call this a peach blow, even though it's pink. It is Victorian. Look at the ruffles on the edges here. And think about uh, the uh, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, how difficult that was to make. I am definitely picking up this piece. And I Let's looked where see the what piece this was sitting piece and I don't is. see anything. Oh, I like the necklace inside there too. Hmm, it's just got, oh, it does have a mark on the bottom. Cow, Cowan? Cowan? Does that ring a bell oh, with Cowan, you? Yeah, yeah, Cowan. Yeah. Um, Cowan was in Cleveland, Ohio, and they were uh, some of their artists and designers were from the Cleveland School, which is a well-known group of art people in Cleveland around the late 1920s. Ooh, that's a pretty piece, there. and the price seems fine for what it is, especially with the discount. Sorry, I, I I squirreled up here to the flower frog depression glass little maiden. 85. <laughs> yeah, I just needed to see what her price was. That is that's a that's a fair price, just not just not one that I can do. Oh my gosh, we're all finding such amazing things. Look at this gorgeous piece of pottery. This is right up my alley. I love that base. They're calling this Belgian pottery. I'm going to confirm that with George, but this is definitely an older piece, quality piece. It says elephant breath glaze. I am going to see if George knows any more about that piece. As I, I really, I would, I like this for my own personal collection. I'm going to buy it either way because um, I just really love it. But I'm going to look at this one too. They're also calling this one Belgium. 1920s, 30s, blue drip glaze. We're working on, uh, since we're buying so many pieces out of this booth, we're working on a little bit of a discount. Yeah. All right, we're buying several pieces, so we're trying to get a deal from this dealer, but I actually really like both of those pieces. I am gonna leave them over in that booth to keep ogling through things. Look at this little Anna Lee, and then there's Anna Lee. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be a, is it a dove? It's a dove, it's like a peace dove. Let's see what the year is on this one. It's a 93 little peace dove for $10. I really, really like that piece. I'm gonna show this one to Tiffany because she's kind of been looking at the Anna Lee pieces to, today, and this one's quite unusual. Tiff Swan. Tiffany, I'm I'm gonna give you the bird. Oh, <laughs> but it's it's a peace dove. Oh, there you go. Look at these ornaments that someone made with beautiful pheasant feathers. They are three dollars each. Now you know I do a bird tree. Actually, my tree is not going to be so great this year. My tree's gonna be kind of small this year, so I don't have room for any more ornaments, but I'm really digging these. Debating getting some and putting them away for next year, because they'd be good accent pieces on my bird tree. Hmm. Mm. 
Radio Shack. Oh, that's uh, that's funny. Memory, memory, memories. That's a really pretty. Look at the size of that Persian box right there. Really pretty. I'm kind of looking at the little stuff. I can deal with little stuff a little bit better than I can deal with big stuff right now. Definitely, I know. I see the cupies. I see them. The last cupie I sold didn't didn't do so good as the cupie could cupie phase over. They were going really, really well for a while, but now I think I think they've mellowed out. The market has mellowed out. Oh my dolls. Ooh. Look at this miracle whip tote. What's it full of? They've got it full of stuff too. What are we doing here? It's a miracle whip picnic pack stackable eight pieces. Oh, really? That goes with it? It's all stainless or actually aluminum pieces. That all goes with it. Interesting. For 55. That's kind of cool actually. Wow, look at that lamp. Look at that lamp. Oh, it's the plastic. It's not glass. It's not glass. They do still call it Tiffany style, uh, but it is plastic. Still sells for some really good money. But I'm, uh, you know me, I'm kind of a, I'm a kind of a glass snob, and I want the real thing. It's another interesting clay nativity look at the character like look at how they're looking here and the angels on the top it's $18 I really like this one too I think that's coming into my collection as well so Loopy show me her booth here and she has these fabulous it's not just Las Vegas jeans they are fabulous <laughs> Las Vegas jeans I would actually I'd wear those yeah what, I did. what size are they oh what was it when I, oh, I was a six are they sixes yeah I could wear those she's like could you hmm, hmm. where would I wear them I don't know <laughs> hmm I think so the ball that I was just looking at over here, she's asking 25, but I bet she'd let me do it for 20. Sure. She would. So I'm <laughs> going to go ahead and get that one. <laughs>